Hello, my name is Claire Dubois and I am crossing another of my absolute out of my comfort zone moments here uh, on Facebook Live thinking this felt like a really good idea when I first decided to do it and now I'm wondering what's going to come out of my mouth because I want to talk about so many things that deeply matter to me and I feel like they're crowding around me and what is it that's actually going to come out of my mouth and will I be able to say it remotely in a way that feels clear and that feels straight and that will land with you. So in, without any knowledge as to how I'm going to do with that, I will just introduce myself. So I am Claire Dubois, I'm the founder of Tree Sisters and the reason I'm here is because we are launching well, we've launched a tree campaign called the Million Trees Campaign as part of our bigger work in the world, which is really putting out the strongest call we can for a new possibility for humanity. And one of the questions that I know will come up again and again and again, and that I will probably answer again and again in many different ways is why is this for women? Why are we launching a reforestation campaign for women when all of us know that it is going to take all of us to make the level of change that has to happen in our world? And how am I going to answer that today? I'll just say this. It is going to take the most extraordinary birthing of a different quality of consciousness to shift the current momentum that we are experiencing in our world right now. It's going to take something completely new to do that. And there is an energy on this planet that has been suppressed for so long, for so many hundreds of years, profoundly suppressed, squashed, ridiculed, derided, told that it's less, misunderstood profoundly. And that is the astonishing nature-based consciousness that can come through women. And not just come through women, but emerge through the collective field of women when we come together, which is something again that has been, we've been so divided for so long and that's over the next few days and weeks, I want to go more deeply into that, to helping us all really understand why we are where we are, not just as women, but as our species. We're an extraordinary, incredibly imaginative, creative species, capable of so much, capable of stuff that just blows me away. I mean, I got stuck with a fax machine, you know, after that technology completely finished me, but our creative capacity has somehow been directed in such a way that we've become lost in what's possible without really considering the impacts. And the impacts are creating a world that isn't even worth thinking about for the children that are being born now, for the children that are alive now, for the lives that they're living into. And actually, even in our lifetimes, in my lifetime, right now, I don't want what's lying ahead. I am frightened of what's lying ahead. And I'm frightened enough of climate instability and of water wars and of everything else that we know is lining up to feel like the things that stop me from stepping up and speaking, the, the reasons why I tell myself that I'm not good enough or it's not worth trying or I'll be ridiculed or I'll be criticized or I'll talk shit when I really should be talking something considerably better. It doesn't matter. I've got to have a go. I've got to have a go. We've got to have a go. There is no possibility of making ourselves safe in any moment that we try to have a go because we never know how it's going to be. We never know what's going to come out of our mouths. We never know what the response is going to be. <sighs> Something else has to matter more. Something else has to matter so much more 
than everything that we tell ourselves that keeps us small. And this is what I'm afraid of on Facebook Live, that every time I come on, I'm going to sit here and start crying. And it may happen, and I may become known as the woman who gets on Facebook Live and starts crying, but something does matter more to me. And I'm sitting here in California right now, looking out at all these trees, knowing that 66 million trees have gone in the last few years in this state alone. Because climate change, because of fires, because of beetles, because as we destroy our forests, there's a certain tipping point beyond which if you destroy enough of them, the rest of them go. And I was at the Amazon Watch Gala two nights ago and I spent three hours with the Amazon Watch team yesterday talking about the fact that 20% of the Amazon is gone and another 20% is already sufficiently degraded. And the scientists who are out there basically say, if you reduce the forest between 40 and 50% and we're already there, you're risking the complete collapse of that ecosystem. And we're sitting here on the edge of the complete collapse of these ecosystems, thinking that somehow we're going to be insulated with the finance that we've got, the stuff that's in our bank account, you know, with the houses that are around us. And it's bullshit. It's absolute, total insanity. And we're not an insane species, not deep inside of ourselves. We're stuck in momentum. We're stuck in uh, an inherited view of ourselves, an inherited story of ourselves, an inherited perception of ourselves and various degrees of complete distortion so that when the Twin Towers come down, we're not told by our leaders, wow, look at this, look at this symptom of breakdown of our society, look at the degree of contrast that we've got that causes people to want to die to get their point across. We're told, go out and shop. Go out and shop. And let's figure out a way to have revenge. You know, that mentality is the same mentality that has us split off from the natural world and not knowing that the greatest homecoming, the greatest power, the greatest joy, the greatest sense of belonging, the, the, the everything that makes sense of what we are is in reconnecting to the life, to the nature, to the trees, to the oceans, to the world that is giving and giving and giving and giving to us in every moment, that is unconditionally providing and providing and providing. And instead of being able to turn around and say, thank you for all that you're providing, Let's take care of you so that you can keep providing. We're just saying, and I want more, and I want more, and I want more, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to get more, and I'm going to take more, and I'm going to take more from you, and I'm going to take more from you. We've been born into that behaviour. But behaviours can change. And ways of being can change. We know we can grow. We know we can evolve. We know we can do so much better than this. I refuse to believe that our ancestors who went through so much, so much to survive and to toil and to grow, did it so that we could sit here at the pinnacle of evolution and say, and now we're going to trash our planet. And I feel that the pinnacle of our evolution is where we sit there and we say, actually, we are at this turning point. We recognize this turning point. Making that turn is our responsibility. And that is a profound privilege. What more meaningful moment is there to be alive, really? To evolve to the point where we can wake up like teenagers who are done with taking our parents for granted, who actually are willing to say, we don't know how to do it. It's gonna be clunky. It's gonna be uncomfortable. We don't like change. But as soon as you start directing your heart towards life, as soon as you start saying, you know what, I'm gonna start caretaking rather than just consuming. As soon as you start pointing yourself back towards the trees and slowing down and feeling and receiving that beauty, you start to feel sane again. And that sanity is so close for all of us, but it's a choice. And that's the choice that over the next few weeks, Every day, if I can sit here and not manage to cry, 
if I can sit here and share everything that's inside me that I'm longing to just bring out to the world for those of you who want to hear or are ready to hear or can find use in what I'm saying, I feel, I feel that we are all permission for each other and the journey that I've been on to be willing to put myself out front no matter how it seems or how it lands or what the response is because my love for this natural world so outweighs my fear of people's perceptions of me. If I can manage that, no matter how difficult it is, then I want to be able to share how I've done that because it's been a monster journey. There's been extraordinary turning points on the way and I feel like there are gifts in those turning points. And I, I want to live inside a species who are willing to play full out, inside a member of a species who are willing to say, yeah, this isn't the best that we can do, we can do better. Who are willing to say, I don't know what to do, but I'm gonna try. Who are willing to say, yes, we're gonna start reallocating. We have to start reallocating. We have to start taking care. Who are willing to say, show me, you know, to all of us out there who are trying to bring solutions, okay, and instead of being in this competitive frame and this disconnected frame, we're willing to say, right, we've got to come together. No matter what happens, no matter what we're afraid of, we have to come together. And I'm going to try to do this in a way that is real and in the moment, you know, I can't prepare for this because I'm one of these people that if you put a camera on me, I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth. And I've no idea what I've said when I've already spoken. So I could sit here and endlessly repeat myself and I'm just going to have to trust that what's going to come out of my mouth is going to be useful. So to all the men who are listening in this moment, and I know you're out there because I can see you popping up here. Tree Sisters is, doesn't exist to say women are better and men don't have a role to play. You men have an immense, immense role to play. And the gift that I bring, the purpose in my life, hasn't been about healing the masculine, although it's in there and it's entwined, and of course it is because it's in me as much as it's in everyone. My life has been an extraordinary journey in understanding how to surface from underneath incredible male domination. And so I understand deeply in my body what it means as a woman to try to stand against all the profound internal fears that we carry. And that is what I want to bring to the women that are here. That is what I'm bringing to Tree Sisters. The reality that far too many of us, almost all women, have internalized through our ancestry, through the messaging that we've got for so, so long, that what we bring has no value. And what we bring is absolutely, fundamentally vital. In the car crash that I, that I had into a tree where I was given tree sisters, which is one of the stories that I'll talk about over this week, the words that I heard were, women are the missing piece and feminine consciousness has to be reinstated or it's over. And I'm going to talk over this week about the journey that I've had about discovering what feminine consciousness even is, about the role of women, about what it means to be a woman, about how our bodies operate differently and the different intelligences that can come through us as a result. I'm going to talk about so many things and then probably after a week of stories, I'm going to be introducing you to some of the, the underpinning fundamental uh, frameworks inside of Tree Sisters which help everyone, men and women, understand how the repression of the feminine is responsible for climate change and how the ascension of the feminine is going to be the way out if we're going to choose to get out of where we are. So wow, there's so many things popping up on my screen here. I just want to say, and people are being nice to me. Thank you for, um, thank you for showing up. Thank you for listening. And the more we can spread this, the more we can try and build momentum over this week, the more we can start directing more and more of us towards the trees. So a little bit about the campaign that we've just started. 
So Tree Sisters is fundamentally a call for a radical shift of perception of ourselves away from a, what I would call an unconscious consumer species to a conscious restorer species. And one of the simplest ways that we can start that shift is to start reallocating funds, is to say, okay, instead of just consuming, consuming, consuming without any understanding of what that is, you know, Amazon watched yesterday understanding that so much of the crude oil that is being processed in California comes straight out of the Amazon. So our choices to use energy here are directly impacting the Amazon. We just don't know. You know, waking up to understanding the impact of our actions and then making choices. We all know that we're heating our planet up. We all know, everybody knows, we're watching the climate going absolutely berserk. We know that carbon dioxide is tree food. We know that trees are carbon made visible. We know that if we are not pulling the carbon down into our forests, it's going into the oceans. We know that the Great Barrier Reef is dying. We know that our coral is dying. We know that the coral is the nurseries for the bottom of the food chain in the oceans. So if the coral goes, the oceans are going to be dying. There are so many impacts to the carbon, the excess carbon that is in our atmosphere that we can start to mitigate, that we can start to pull down if we get it into the trees. Tropical trees are the fastest growing trees on the planet. We're talking about reforesting the tropics. That's what I was told when I crashed the car. You have 10 years to reforest the tropics. We have to do it really fast. And the thing is, we can. We can because the infrastructure is there. There are tree planting organizations throughout the tropics who are just sitting there saying, help us do our work. And what we're trying to do is say, right, okay, we will gather, we will gather the, the women, we will gather the men, we will gather those who are willing to say, yes, we recognize that if we are warming our planet, we have to cool her down. And we can cool her down by planting trees, by the million. That's why the Million Tree Campaign. This month, if in October, we can get to 2,500 men and women, we're trying to find the women who are willing to say, yes, I will stand for the trees, then we will be planting approximately 100,000 trees a month, which is well over a million trees a year. From there, it's 25,000 of us that will be a million trees a month. From there, it needs to become a million trees a week. Then it needs to become a million trees a day. There's a Brazilian scientist who's just come out and said 184 million football pitch areas of forest need to be replanted in the Amazon for the Amazon to actually start to truly thrive again. We can do it. It's doable. It's just this shift of perception that says, well, you know, do I want to give five pounds to the forest while spending the rest of everything I earn on taking from the planet? And what I would say, please, in this moment is recognize that when you start to direct money away from just taking and towards giving, something in your heart changes. Something profound in your heart changes. The Million Trees campaign, that is milliontreescampaign.com right now. When you give 10 pounds, you are funding 40 tropical trees and you're funding them across Brazil and India and Kenya and Madagascar. And you can look at our stunning, very diverse projects on the website, treesisters.org. 10 pounds, how many of us can give 10 pounds? How many of us can give 20 pounds? How many of us could actually give 500 pounds or $500 a month and not even think about it? And I know that we're not supposed to talk about money, but I need to talk about money. I want to look at everybody and say, what are your savings saving? Really? Because we're losing species so fast. And it's not just animals and insects and butterflies and bees. It's trees as well. We're also funding endangered species of trees in Brazil, in these forest corridors that are linking up the last fragmented remnants of the Atlantic rainforest. There's 7% left. Where we're planting, there's 3% left. And now we're trying to build corridors back so that the remaining endangered species can actually move around their natural um, patrol zones. So please, day one, are you willing to join us? Are you willing to become a tree sister? Are you willing to stand for the trees? Do you want the world to thrive for your children? Are you willing to make that shift? 
And can you find in your heart an amount that you would like to give every month that has that edge, that like, oh, can I do it? Because if you can find that edge of giving that really touches you, then that being touched is going to it's going to connect you directly more to the trees and more to what we're doing because we need you. We need your attention. We need your energy. We need your brilliance. We need your creativity. We need your ideas. It's not about tree sisters being this thing over here and you give us money and then we'll just do it. If you give us your money, we will send it. It will go into the ground. But it's about all of us bringing our creativity. It's about creating this together. And that is my longing that we can find our togetherness, that we can discover the brilliance in our togetherness, that we can find strength in our togetherness and hope in our togetherness, and then let the sanity of who and what we really are as a restorer species begin to emerge. So please join us. You can either come to treesisters.org and just go to the join page, or you can go to themilliontreescampaign.com and join us. And right now we're also running the Feminine Awakening series, which is absolutely astonishing for me as the one who is interviewing these amazing women. Tomorrow I'm interviewing Eve Ensler, who is one of my all-time heroines. She is, I think, one of the greatest women doing the most tricky work on the planet. And together we're going to talk about what it means to be a woman coming into our bodies, what it means to move through the trauma that most of us are holding in order to bring our gifts. And I hope that you'll be with us for that. That is femininewakeningseries.org.com rather. And any of this you can find on the Facebook page. So thank you so much for being with me today. If you've been with me today, if I've repeated myself a hundred times, then I hope it was useful. And I ask you from my heart to share this on your page. I ask you please to come back tomorrow and be with me when I'm going to tell one of the fundamental stories of how this all started for me because it is a profound story that if you can live it in your own body will create change and we need to create change. So hold my hand and I will hold your hand and through this month let's see what we can create for the trees. Thank you so much.